Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the M87 supermassive black hole, but this time about the jet that it creates. Because a very recent observation and a very recent scientific paper discovered that, well actually rediscovered that the material in this jet appears to be moving really really fast. As a matter of fact, it appears to be moving faster than the speed of light. Huh? Okay, let's talk about this. And welcome to Odeme. So when it comes to the faster than speed of light travel, we know that nothing in the universe can actually travel faster than the speed of light. Or can it? Well, the idea of superluminal motion does not necessarily violate laws of physics. Because even though nothing can physically travel faster than the speed of light, there are certain things, or certain, I guess, phenomena you can call them, that do create faster than speed of light motion in terms of the actual appearance. In other words, sometimes the light creates a very unusual visual illusion where it does appear to be traveled much faster than it should be traveling. One of the best examples is actually the so-called light echoes created by this beautiful star that you see right here. But we're going to be talking about these light echoes and other superluminal motion effects in another video. So make sure to subscribe because this video will be released relatively soon. But a somewhat more complicated effect is created by various black holes and pulsars when their jets travel really 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 fast. And when they seem to be pointed not exactly at us, not at 90 degrees, but at just the right angle toward us. And so when the black hole in the center of the galaxy creates a very powerful jet and it's pointed at just the right way at us, it can occasionally, or actually most of the time, appear to create these effects of faster than light travel. So first, let's go through the physics of how exactly this works. Actually, we don't really need physics, we just need a bit of trigonometry. A wonderful person by the name of Sihad Kidris provides a pretty good explanation of what's really happening by using this really simply drawn uh, illustration. So this right here in the center, point A, is the black hole. That right here on the right is us. And at point zero, we're going to release one of the photons and it's going to travel toward our planet. Then, about 100 years later, this light will have reached the point D, so this distance here is exactly 100 light years. However, if a jet from a black hole is traveling at the speed of about 0.9 speed of light, it's only going to travel about 90, or actually not about, exactly 90 light years. So this is 90, this here is 100. Now, to find this distance CD, we have to use a bit of trigonometry. It's essentially uh, the hypotenuse here multiplied by the cosine of the angle, which in this case is 15 degrees. And then we take that and subtract 100 from it. So what exactly are we going to get here? And a quick Google calculation gives us the value of about 13. So this here is 13 light years in length. Now what about this distance? Well, to find this, we once again use trigonometry. Hypotenuse is here, this is the angle. So we have to do sine 15 multiplied by 90 to get the value of about 23.3 light years. In other words, technically, even though the light has only traveled 13 light years, it will appear to have traveled 23 light years, suggesting that this here is faster than light motion. Now, it might not really come to you right away because it is a somewhat tricky concept, but by the time Photon 1 and Photon 2 get to Earth, the light will give an appearance of traveling at 1.8 the speed of light. In other words, the light itself seems to be traveling faster than the speed of light. Now, we know this is impossible, and the trigonometry behind it explains how all of this works. And so now, let's get back to M87 and its jet. Well, over the years, specifically for about 30 years now, the scientists have been actively studying various chunks of matter coming from the astrophysical jet itself. And in order for these jets to be created, some of the matter has to actually infold toward the black hole. And as the matter falls toward the black hole, some of it is going to end up inside the black hole, but some of it will actually get accelerated by the magnetic field and end up in one of the jets. However, despite our simulations showing them as somewhat, um, I guess, linear and continuous, as a matter of fact, this is a very beautiful jet right here, in reality, the jets are much more irregular and are made up of clumps and different knots that can easily be seen in different images created throughout the years. 
This here was created in radio waves. We also have very similar observations in visual light. And now the scientists have also created observations in the X-ray using the Chandra Observatory. And this allowed us to very accurately calculate the superluminal velocity, allowing us to estimate the actual speed of the particles inside the jet. To do this, they looked at two different observations from 2012 and 2017 at two different chunks of matter. And then looked at various knots from a distance of about 900 light years up to about 2500 light years away from the black hole and observed their progression and their changes. So this is a five year difference here. And even though it's a little bit difficult to see in this image, a much thorough analysis established how much these different knots inside the jet moved in these five years. And what they've discovered is that some of these jets were moving at about 2.3 times the speed of light, others were moving closer to about 6.3 times the speed of light. And once again, this is the appearance of motion, so this allowed the scientists to very accurately estimate the actual speed of the jet. And it's very, very close to about 99% of the speed of light, allowing us to very accurately estimate the speed of the jet and its particles. This also allowed the scientists to establish that the X-ray observations are very accurate in determining the speed of jet particles. And this technique will probably be used in other studies as well to try to calculate how fast certain particles move in other jets as well. Their other discoveries involved noticing that the entire jet kind of faded by about 70% in about 5 year time, suggesting that there's a lot of energy lost by these particles due to the radiation produced as they move around the magnetic field in this region. And when trying to compare this observation to the observation made by the Event Horizon Telescope, the scientists mentioned that, well, this here is kind of like looking at the rocket launch. Basically, this is the rocket itself. And as this rocket launches into space, we then get to see the actual rocket in flight. So this here shows us the path that all of these particles take throughout the universe as they're released by the black hole. And even though in some way this is not a groundbreaking discovery because we've known about these jets and how fast the particles are moving here, this here is a much more accurate calculation and the confirmation of how quickly the particles move when they're released by various black holes. And since this jet is not super long, it's only about 5,000 light years, much shorter than a lot of other jets in the universe, it seems that we got pretty lucky in being able to study it and in uh, learning so much about it, because basically this is the closest such unusual jet to us. It's only about 55 million light years away, this is one of the closest galaxies to us, and this black hole is one of the biggest black holes nearby. So in that sense, we're just in the right location at the right time. But anyway, on that note, that's really all I wanted to mention about the study. You can learn more about everything that the scientists discovered in the study in the description below. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. And maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.